Hey guys, welcome into the State Champs studio for another edition of the State Champs High School Sports Show. I'm Elizabeth Kuhn here with Sydney Carriott, and we've got exciting highlights to start off with. We sure do, and what better way to start the show off than with a rivalry game between Grand Blank and Davison out at Grand Blank on the volleyball court. And let me just tell you, this crowd was so loud, it felt like a playoff environment out there. It was so loud in the crowd, it felt like it was like a Friday night at a football game. Grand Blank won this one in five sets, but it was no easy task. They split the first four, and then Grand Blank won that last one 15 to 11. So it was a very close match all throughout. We could potentially see them again down the road, but we did get a chance to catch up with Remy Madison after the game, and she said it was so loud in the gym, it was so hard for them to hear in the huddle. I'm literally screaming at the top of my lungs, like my voice is like about gone because I cannot hear nothing. But I know I just really have to tune into them and my teammates. I know what they're, they're always going to be there for me, so I just try my best to try to like minimize everything else and just listen to my, the sound of my voice, teammates' voices. Last year we didn't even win districts, and I would definitely not like that to happen again because I truly believe that this team can go far and beyond. They are gritty, like when they get down. They're going to fight to, to the nail to kind of get the set back, get the points back. Um, if they lose a the set, they're going to try to figure out how to win the next one. Um, they're just a really, really gritty group of girls, and they're not going to give up. I have 15 strong on my team, and they're all talented. I don't have any weak players on my team, so I'm super proud of all of them. And moving on over to our next game, we had South Lion East on the road at Wald Lake Northern. South Lion East did take the first set, but then Wald Lake Northern just took the last three and got the win over this one. Those senior captains on Wald Lake Northern, Bella Harding and Olivia Bonkowski, they spoke to us after the game and talked about how well they think they're playing. It was a tough battle, but it really showcased what we can do as a team. We knew that we were going to have a challenge, um, so Going against them and beating them in like four sets was amazing and it felt great to um, have the team come together and just dominate, I guess. Brighton at Northville. Northville swept Brighton three games to nothing. And after the game, Northville's head coach Sarah Lindstrom talked about how well her players played. We have a Battle Creek sign in our locker room that we touch every day. At practice, games, when we come out of that locker room, we are talking about what can we do, and we know we've got to beat those teams um, in order to, to get to where we want to be. So I think just talking about it, um, but we're ready. I think these girls want to grind, and they want what, what's there. We were so close last year. We were ready to taste the water in Battle Creek, you know? So um, we're out for a vengeance, and I don't think there's a single team in the state that these girls are scared to play against. We are really excited coming into today's game. It was our first big game, our first student section, really, and everyone was nervous in the beginning, but we kind of just decided, like, acknowledge you're nervous, um, move on from it, and play the best game we can. All right, guys, time for an update in our state champs Mr. Football race presented by Hungry Howie's. First, put your hands together. Scott Bernstein sitting in for Sean Belizean this week. Scotty's doing so much for state champs behind the scenes, writing blogs, getting our rankings together. Uh, of course, working on the Hungry Howie's Mr. Football and Anvil races. Thanks for being here, man. Yeah, man, thanks. I, I love talking about 2022 Mr. Football. It is such a tight race. So many playmakers, you know, it's going to be a real race to the finish, if you will. As it is every year, but right now it's really interesting uh, as we get into week five of the high school football season. Uh, this young man you're talking about today converted from wide receiver to a running back after a really good sophomore season, uh, you know, catching the ball. Uh, 31 scholarship offers along with his high school quarterback, uh, they are both avid fishermen, so I guess it's, it's only fitting that uh, both of them uh, at the college level heading from Wald Lake to the land of 10,000 lakes. Both going to Minnesota, row the boat nation, Drew Vioto, the quarterback, but we're going to talk about Darius Taylor, the superstar running back. For my money, he's the front runner right now in Mr. Football, uh, one of only a handful of guys in the state to already go over 1,000 yards, uh, 16 touchdowns. 
two separate games where he had six trips into the end zone apiece. Beast mode, 24-7. I call him the D-Train. He is a runaway locomotive right now. Uh, just so much, uh, he's a tsunami of swagger, hurricane of hustle and flow. He, he checks every box. He runs with power, with speed, with vision. You mentioned the versatility. Um, just really impressed. I, I saw him as a sophomore, as a slot receiver. He was only about 5'9", um, and he was great going across the middle. Obviously, he's got tremendous wheels, but uh, in between the sophomore and junior year, he grew up, to, uh, shot up uh, in height, went to about 6'1", and uh, they gave him the ball as their uh, featured ball carrier last year. Had a breakout season, almost 2,000 yards rushing, almost 1,000 yards receiving. Just really came on like a, uh, like a freight train. That's why I call him the, 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 the D train. And then this year, it's just more of the same. Uh, first game of the season, six touchdowns. Last week, six touchdowns. I mean, most players, I would guess, on an average, don't have six touchdowns their whole career. Right. And he's done it twice in two games. And it's already, <laughs> it's only, I we're know. only in week five. I know. His style compared to others, maybe, uh, that you've seen. Well, he's just, he's a guy that, you know, he's not a pure power runner but he can go up in between the tackles. He's got you know, tremendous speed, he can beat you around edge. Uh, like I said, I love the vision and how he runs, uh, you know, his cutbacks, he can hit a hole so fast. And then when you add the, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the jet burners, when he gets in the open field, it's lights out, you're done. He's headed to the house and, and, and it's just like uh, you know, a vapor coming behind right. him. Right, and his versatility translates to the fact that maybe he's a three-sport athlete. He's also a, a, a Division I state qualifying wrestler. He's also a, a track runner. Uh, he is going to enroll early uh, at the University of Minnesota. Uh, very, very interesting as far as an athlete when you compare our 2016 Mr. Football from Walt Lake Western, Mr. Cody White. Yeah, well, Cody uh, obviously had a great career at Michigan State. He's in the pros right now. Uh, you know, he was just that prototypical deep threat. Uh, but what I, what, you know, the, the comparison I would make is that as human beings, as young men, as student athletes, they're very comparable, even though one was a wide receiver and one was a running back. Uh, Darius is a guy that, uh, you know, is pushing, you know, towards a 4.0 uh, GPA in the classroom. He is uh, just, whenever you talk to him, it's yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the, the love you're giving me. And, uh, uh, you know, just a guy that is, has a wealth of football knowledge and it translates from the football field in, into the classroom and just a, just a knockout of a human being. And I think the, the sky is so bright for him at Minnesota. And I think we say a lot about kids that can, you know, when rubber hits road in college and they, and they reach campus, they can make an immediate impact. Sometimes that might be overstated, but with Darius, I think in the first year or two, you're gonna see him uh, really take the Big Ten by storm. Thank you, Scott. And when it comes to voting in the State Champs Hungry Howie's Mr. Football Race, vote and vote as much as you like at statechampsnetwork.com. We made it real easy. No more email needed to be put in. Just simply go there, vote for your guy, and we'll give you another update next week. Time now to take a look inside Lawrence Technological University. LTU offers several degree programs that cater towards your interests. In joining Blue Devil Motorsports, students gain valuable career-enhancing experience in competitions that challenge them to tackle real-world design and engineering challenges. Any student at LTU can join one of the teams associated with Blue Devil Motorsports. Baja SAE allows engineering students to design and build an off-road vehicle that will survive rough terrain. When students collaborate together, Together, they build a better product, problem solve, and represent Lawrence Tech on an international stage. Blue Devil Motorsports, just another of the fantastic programs offered to Lawrence Technological University students. Your college decision is one of the biggest you'll ever make. You owe it to yourself to consider Lawrence Tech. Begin at ltu.edu right now. Here at State Champs, we cover all sports, and we're going to start off kicking it out to the soccer field in Flint. The Fenton soccer team looking to remain unbeaten, taking on Clio. I'm Greg Molson with the highlights, and the Tigers tilted the field right from the start, keeping the ball in the Mustangs' end. But it's the Clio keeper, Brent Bell, keeping the ball out of the net. 
Check out the diving stop here on Tyler Hahn. But the Tigers finally get one past Bell off the corner kick. Patrick Hamilton with the assist. Tyler Hahn using his head for the goal. It was 1-0 at the half. Gibson Lehman then has a great chance to add to the lead, but it's Bell with another diving save. The Tigers' constant pressure would wear down the Mustangs keeper, though. Will Dickens with a shot that goes off Bell and into the net to make it two zip. Then it's Dickens adding an assist with another corner right to the head of Tyler Hahn. His second of the night makes it a 3-0 final. Fenton remains unbeaten for the season, now 10-0-1. Olé, 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 olé. I'm Chris Gorski, back on the west side of the state. We head to South Christian High School for the OK Red Jamboree. Some lightning in the area forced a late start, but they were able to get the race in. Kicking things off with the boys. Early on in the race, Jordan Domani, the senior from Caledonia, setting the pace with East Kentwood's Isaac Tannis not far behind. Grand Haven's Seth Norder finished second in the Division I state championship a year ago. Here he picks up the win for the Bucks, with teammate Nolan Clark taking home second place. Grand Haven sophomore Ben Held would finish seventh as the Bucks take home first place as a team. One, two, three. Next up was the girls race featuring the number one ranked team in Division I, Holland West Ottawa. And a pair of Panthers set the pace early on as Helen Sachs and Ariane Olsen were running stride for stride with one another. Sachs finished fifth in the Division I state championship race last year as a freshman. Now a sophomore, she takes home first place after cutting over 45 seconds off her time from the state finals. Olsen would bring home second place as West Ottawa wins the girls race taking four of the top eight places. We head over to the pool as number one ranked in Division Three, Birmingham Marion travels to three-time defending D2 state champs, Birmingham Seahawks. Let's start off with the 200 IM. This one would be close, but senior Rachel Bello for the Maples would take it with a time of two minutes, 13 seconds. Now to the 50 freestyle. Senior Samantha Clifford would waste no time finishing with a 1.15 second win with a time of 25.04 seconds. Let's head to the diving board. Grace Morgan for Marion would set a school record with this one. Look at that, the senior would end with a final score of 200.20. Next up, the 100-yard freestyle. This would be a nail-biter. Sophomore Abby Stanley and junior Lena McKenney would be neck and neck. Stanley able to grab the win with a time of 55.91 seconds. This one would be all Seahome. Avery Anderson finishing the backstroke with a three-second victory. Now check this out. Teammates Lindsey Lowers and Haley Crowey would battle it out to the end. Junior Lowers would grab that win. This night would belong to the Maples. Birmingham Seahome would snag the win. We're gonna take a quick time out and check in with DMC's Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine for their Game Changers. Hi, I'm Laura Ramos with DMC Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine with today's Game Changers Pop Quiz. True or false? Immediately after you pull or strain a muscle, you should apply ice for 20 minutes. The answer is false. There is a lot of confusion surrounding the topic of whether to use ice or heat following a muscle injury. In the past 10 years, there has been no significant research that supports the use of ice for acute injury recovery. Applying ice to an injured tissue causes blood vessels near the injury to constrict and shut off the blood flow that brings the healing cells of inflammation. And therefore, applying ice to reduce swelling delays healing. Since applying ice to an injury has been shown to reduce pain, it is acceptable to cool an injured part for short periods of time soon after an injury occurs. 
You could apply the ice for up to 10 minutes, then remove it for 20 minutes, and then repeat the 10 minute ice application once or twice. For more sports performance tips, or to make an appointment with a DMC physical therapist or sports medicine physician, visit dmc.org slash game changers. Do you have a sports injury or are you just looking to take your game to the next level? Then go where the pros go. DMC Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. For immediate care, call 313-910-9328 or visit dmc.org slash game changers. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back after this week's MHSAA Minute. The MHSA Sportsmanship Summit Series is back. For the first time since the fall of 2019, students from all over the state are being brought together for interactive and hands-on workshops covering the topic of sportsmanship. Sportsmanship is one of the most important aspects of educational athletics and along with scholarship, safety, and an appropriate scope, it is one of our four core values of school sports. Winning is great, but good sportsmanship helps develop habits that can be used well beyond the playing field. The Sportsmanship Summit is a one-day conference for students to learn about sportsmanship and appropriate behavior for student sections. We'll be hosting these in four different cities. Marquette on November 7th, Saginaw on November 9th, Grand Rapids on November 14th, and in Ypsilanti on November 16th. Each site is limited to 225 attendees, so be sure to register now to reserve your space. Registration materials and other information on the summit can be found at mhsa.com. A lively student section can create a fun and exciting atmosphere at games, but we want to make sure students don't take this a step too far. The summits are a great way to learn from other schools around the state, and we hope to see you there this fall. Okay guys, without any further delay, let's get an update in the State Champs Anvil Award presented by Hungry Howies. Of course, to help us do that each and every week is the Hall of Fame coach Tim Beckler. And all right guys, finally, we're making some changes into this conversation. And I want to put a caveat right out the beginning, kind of explain what we're doing here. Uh, because I know there's a lot of Amir Herring fans in this uh, community and those who are paying attention to this particular race. But know this. We don't want to have more than a pair of guys from any one particular high school. To have three would be excessive when we're really trying to spread out the love here and trying to recognize who we feel is going to be the top linebacker or lineman in the state this year. So, while Amir Herring is going to fall out of the competition for now, Brandon Davis Swain is our leading vote getter, so he cannot be removed. Those are the rules. But we just could not wait any longer and get this other West Bloomfield Laker into the mix. It is a linebacker. We don't have many linebackers in this race this season, which is a little unusual. Uh, but this guy has been bringing a little background, played at West Bloomfield his freshman year for that state championship team, went to IMG Academy, has come back for his last two seasons. Uh, I know that he is heavy, you know, very interested in wanting to play in the Big Ten somewhere in this region, felt it was going to be a lot better for him to do visits and all of that. Uh, we're talking about Kari Jackson, and this guy is a beast. He really is. Uh, 6'2", 220. And what's so impressive when you watch the film is his quickness. Boy, does he move. He, you talk about bursts to the ball. I mean, he closes on people in a hurry. What's really impressive is this kid's a natural. The way he moves, you know, that when he's moving forward, he's in a stance. He's got a base. His, his shoulders are square to the line of scrimmage. He has to run laterally sometimes to go a little faster. And he can do that and still be quick and still stay square in the line of scrimmage. And he knows when to turn and run to run the ball down. Uh, then attacking blockers, wow. He really attacks blockers and just naturally just throws them off. He's a great shutter of blocks. Um, and he's a great tackler too. He hits like a freight train. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, again, 
this race is open uh, to all classes. So the fact that you don't have to be a senior uh, to qualify or win this award. In fact, Dante Moore in our Mr. Football race is, was a junior last year and won Mr. Football. So we're also making another change in the Anvil Award. And uh, I know that Swartz Creek is 4-0. Uh, and uh, Jacob Booth has, has, has done, I'm sure, everything he needs to, uh, but he is going to come out of this race. He's only got about five votes right now, so uh, we, we obviously want to see uh, that improve if we can, but uh, we are going to add an offensive lineman on a team, a Brighton team, that is 4-0. Uh, and again, we don't always have to have the top D1 prospects, particularly in this race. It's whoever's playing the best, uh, in the, and that's what makes high school football great. Uh, and um, this is a young man, Jack Story, who has um, played his self into this competition. Absolutely, he's 6'5", 260. Um, not a huge road grader type, but I really like how he's, he's sleek, moves very well, especially on combo blocks working up to the second level defenders. He's always got a wide base on him. Uh, he pulls well out on screens, on running plays. He just moves extremely well for a, a large kid. And uh, he's always under control when he gets there too. He doesn't do flybys. He still keeps his, his base. And like all the other guys, he finishes with his legs. Very, very dominant. You know, and he's probably gonna play baseball and football at Hope College, which is a great choice. And you know that college well as your son has been playing his football. Yes, it's a great place for him to go and for, you know, to play under, uh, you know, Peter Sturzma, a great experience, great school, uh, great decision. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, great football at the Division three level. Absolutely. You know, no doubt about it. And he gets an opportunity. He's a great baseball player too, so I'm sure you get an opportunity to see him this spring. He made uh, some waves in the playoffs last season for Brighton. Okay, every week we end the show with uh, our question of the week. And um, I'm always kind of racking my brain to kind of figure out what, what's one that, uh, you know, we can get to that, that is pertinent. But uh, I'm setting up a, a hypothetical here, a scenario, and I'm sure it is playing out for some people right now. Uh, week five, as we've talked about on this show, is a critical point to the season. Uh, so let's say your team is maybe not having the best jump out of the gate. They're one in three, say, at this point. Any loss could make a hope of a playoff berth virtually extinct. Win could be just the momentum you need to make a run. You're facing your biggest rival. It's rivalry week, so everything is elevated. Uh, the hype is out there on social media. There's talk going on both sides. The kids are invested and maybe a little distracted, quite frankly. Um, how do you coach this week, especially your offense and defensive lines, who you know are critical to getting done what you need to get done? And let's even throw in the fact that maybe it's been years since your team has beaten your rival. So none of these kids have had a chance to experience a win. They only know defeat. How do you keep them grounded and inspired to perform in a game that quite frankly, this might be one of the ones they remember forever? Absolutely, and then I call these the rubber hits the road games. You gotta have them. Now hopefully the coach treats every game of the season like it's a Super Bowl. I never was a big guy in saying, this game's special. Yeah. We've really got to do this this week or, you know, it's right. going to be tough. It should be like that every single week. So it's just another game, business as usual. But words don't win. I mean, you can give the best win-win for the Gipper speech, but once the ball's kicked off, you got to play well to win this game. And as far as the social media and the talking, again, you know I'm not a big Twitter guy. No. Um, they need to be stone cold on that and just – if they feel they need to tweet something, just say, see you on Friday. That's it, and forget about it. Because what you want to have happen, seven o'clock Friday night, that's when you want them to erupt like volcanoes. Not before that, not earlier in the week, but you gotta wait for that. And I also believe you don't focus on winning. You focus on the process goals that allow you to win. On Monday, I would, you know, my staff and I would say, well, this is what has to happen. I'd write the offensive line up there and say, we need 300 yards rushing and 15 first downs. Defensive line, we need five tackles for loss, we need two sacks, and we need a fumble recovery. Defensive backs, we need one pick from you guys this week, and we need to win 70% of third down conversions. We gotta get off the field. So then everything we do that week is preparing for those process goals to happen. 
And guess what? You make those process goals, winning just happens. Yeah, there you go. Words don't win. Learn it, live it, love it. All right, congratulations to Jack and Carr for getting in the competition. We'll have another update next week. We still have so much more to check out, so let's head out to the tennis courts. I'm Chris Gorski on the west side of the state, taking you to East Grand Rapids, where the Pioneers hosted the 2021 Division II State Runners-Up, Forest Hills Northern. In the one singles flight, Ryan Lee for the Huskies taking on Andrew Owings, a freshman out of EGR. First set, Lee in the far court, getting his opponent into the corner before hitting a winner to the opposite side. Lee would take the one singles flight in straight sets for Northern. Next, we head to three singles and Sam Wynn in the near court. He draws his opponent up to the net before smoking a winner down the side. Wynn brings home the singles flight for the Huskies. Rounding out the singles action, we head to four singles and see Sebastian Madlang Bayan get the winner here as Forest Hills Northern sweeps the single side. Over at one doubles, Anderson Holland took first place at two doubles in the state tournament a year ago. This year, he's partnered with Aiden Brayer and keeping the momentum going. Holland with quick reflexes at the net and the Huskies take one dubs. Next up, two doubles for Northern features Kyle Wong and Elliot Rothstein. Rothstein plays it back to EGR before getting the winner at the net. Huskies add another win at two dubs. And finally, at three doubles, Kyle Cornell partnering up with Tanay Shinoy, and Shinoy gets the overhead smash here to finish this one off. Big day for the Huskies as they win 8 0. I'm Kevin Trzinski, and we go to Anchor Bay for a Macomb area Red Division matchup in boys soccer between the Tars and the Chippewa Valley Big Reds. Both teams sitting near the top of the standings, big points on the line, big game ahead. First half action, big reds on the attack. The feed over to the middle is going to be picked up by Alex Prankosevic. And the boot from far goes right into the Tars keep hands. That's Connor Turala with the save. Anchor Bay now getting some possession with the ball. Gavin Lemire put some razzle dazzle on the dribble. Off the left foot but the save by the big reds keep Davida Yunchai. Corner cooking up for Chip Valley. Max Patino with the honors. Everyone trying to set up the perfect play, but the ball hits the turf. Billy Bingham boots this one off balance and punched away by the keeper, Yunchai, and this game's still tight. Two goose eggs up on the board at the break. Back and forth action all game. Anchor Bay getting a chance here with Gavin Lemire. That one oh so close off the crossbar from the header. A few inches down and that would put the Tars in the lead, but we are still tied at zero. Full sprint ahead for Garrick Pojit. The junior wants to break this scoreless tie. Yoon Chai comes up big with the stop on his knees. One last chance for the big reds here. Owen Thompson, the left foot boot from far. Check out the diving save by Kano Turala. Clock strikes zero and this tough battle for Anchor Bay and Chippewa Valley ends in a scoreless tie. We are so excited. We're gonna be covering a ton of football games from across the state. Oh yeah, and if we learned anything from last week, an upset can happen on any given Friday. So this week is sure to be another great week on the gridiron and we have a ton of games we'll be covering, like Liz said, across the entire state. And we'll keep you up to date on our social media. So be sure to check out there on all platforms, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, we've got it all. And then to catch all the game highlights, Watch Football Friday's Overtime powered by State Champs on Valley Sports Extra. Well, another fun week in the books. Oh yeah, and have a great weekend everyone and a happy Friday. We'll see you next week. State Champs High School Sports Show is powered by Lawrence Technological University. Visit l2athletics.com and recruit yourself. State Champs is also brought to you by the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. The Michigan Army National Guard, a proud sponsor of the MHSAA. And the Detroit Medical Center Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine Pros. Visit dmc.org slash game changers. Hungry Howie's, famous for flavor.